Hello everyone, uh, this is Miguel Yanez uh, from ESI and I would like to welcome everyone to the webinar. Um, it's, it's already uh, a little bit a few minutes past uh, 1 p.m. in Central Time, 2 p.m. Eastern and it's a good time to start a webinar. And, and so I would like to thank everyone for attending this webinar. Today we're going to be talking about on bill financing and how member owned utilities in the Midwest can take advantage and make use of on bill financing. And so before I start the webinar, um, I would like just to do a couple of housekeeping uh, reminders uh, and so I will ask everyone to if you're using your phones uh, to, to please mute them um, and um, and so it's it's a star six uh, if you want to mute your telephones and then later you can unmute them when you want to ask a question and we will talk about that uh, at the end of the webinar before the questions and so, as I said, um, uh, my name is Miguel Yanez. I'm um, with the Environmental and Energy Study Institute, uh, which is a, uh, a nonprofit here uh, based in Washington, D.C. So I'm very happy to be with everyone uh, on this webinar and doing it together with uh, Associated uh, Electric Co-op, and who have so kindly help us in promoting uh, this webinar and I want to offer a, a thank you uh, to them and so uh, with that I would like to give the word over to Dave Renzi who is the uh, manager for member uh, energy services at Associated so um, Dave please uh, take it away thank you Miguel well, I just wanted to also welcome everybody uh, to the webinar today. I met with Miguel and uh, Mark uh, Walters with Renew Missouri back in April along with Chris Rolfing and we discussed this program. I know it's been around a little while and, and we have shared that with our member owners in the past, but I think there's some um, interesting changes possibly to the program that we wanted to hear about and thought this was an opportunity to to put the word out there and uh, get our member owners up to speed on it to see if it was something that they wanted to add to their energy efficiency portfolio. So again, welcome everybody and I'll turn it back over to Miguel and, and Lindsay. Look forward to hearing what Lindsay has to tell us about the cooperatives of South Carolina. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Dave, for the introduction. And as uh, he said, we, we started talking uh, about on bill financing when I was in Missouri back in, in April and uh, trying to start talking about all the work that ESI, the Environmental and Energy Study Institute, is doing in regards to on bill financing. So let me start with uh, what we do as a Nonprofit. We are a nonpartisan uh, nonprofit that mostly works on federal policy education and, and clean energy issues. Um, but for the past six years, we have been working on a more local level, working with rural electric co-ops in South Carolina, uh, developing an on bill financing pilot program. Uh, which will be uh, provided in more detail by the next speaker, Lindsay Smith, who is with the Electric Cooperatives of South Carolina. And so, working with the associate with this association and with eight co-ops in South Carolina and with Central Power Electric Co-op, which is the power provider for for these co-ops in South Carolina, the same way that Associated is also a, a GNT or power provider uh, for co-ops ac across Missouri 
Oklahoma, uh, Northeast Oklahoma and Southern Iowa. Uh, these uh, Iowa City, uh, these cops uh, developed about 125 homes and retrofitted them over a 12 month period. So Li Lindsay Smith will go over these details um, uh, uh, shortly after my presentation. And so I want to start talking about what is on bill financing. Uh, that's the main topic of this webinar, and I just want to lay out the basics of what on bill is. So in this webinar, on bill, on -bill financing is, is mostly a loan. Uh, it's typically made by a utility to one of its customers or members. And it is repaid on the monthly bill, on the monthly bill of the customer that chooses to do the energy efficiency retrofit. Probably the most common application for on bill for electric utilities is to finance energy efficiency improvement to their customer home. And so, in this webinar, uh, when I refer to on bill financing, also Lindsay Smith will refer to on bill financing, will be about building efficiency upgrades. But you can also use on bill financing to finance other things. It could be distributed generation, uh, such as solar, wind and all sorts of other projects. One of the great aspects of on bill financing is it provides a viable alternative for homeowners that cannot afford the upfront cost of energy efficiency upgrades and therefore cannot use and cannot get all the advantages of the rebates and the tax incentives that are normally used by utilities to get customers to do energy efficiency retrofits. And so as utilities uh, think about developing an on bill financing program, they can do it in different ways. Uh, and so as they design the program, it can be made to be at least bill neutral or even uh, to generate a cash flow positive for the customer. As a bill neutral program, it means that the monthly average energy savings are equal to or greater than the monthly loan payment. Uh, and as I said, it can also be designed so that it can provide a positive cash flow for the participants of the program. And so this also allows for alternative loan underwriting methods, such as using good, good payment bill history of participants uh, to determine eligibility for the program instead of credit checks. So using these alternative writing, underwriting methods can open the door for lower income uh, households that might not have good credit scores. And so this goes into the point that on bill financing really benefits everyone. It benefits, part it benefits customers of all low income and middle class as it opens the door to those that cannot afford upfront payments and to those families that cannot uh, have a good credit check score history and so it can also benefit renters and it will and it benefits participants in lowering their energy bills, saving energy, and increasing comfort levels in the house. We have heard of people saying that with 
the house is being retrofitted. They are no, they're not just more comfortable, but they feel that their houses are much uh, bigger. That's their feeling because they can be closer to the window than, than before when it was so cold it couldn't, uh, or so hot, they couldn't stand close to the window. On -build at, a, at a larger scale, on -build farms in Provence can drive local economic activity and create new contractor and energy auditor jobs. As houses are being retrofitted, it creates uh, a, 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 large, a large network of contractors that are certified for developing energy efficiency retrofits, usually BPI or ResNet. And so it also benefits the utility as, as essentially on bill financing helps customers and members of the COB and it increases their satisfaction. And so as it increases their satisfaction, they they're feeling more connected to the co-op and it provides a and it provides a consumer service program for the utility. And additionally, as on bill financing reduces energy, it can it can also curb the need uh, to build new expensive power plants. So on bill financing is not a new concept. It has been around for decades. Uh, throughout research here at ESI, we have found more than 50 co-ops in 22 states that are either running or have run on bill financing programs. And they have come in many different shapes and sizes. These programs, especially some of the older ones, are not necessarily designed to achieve energy saving. Some may be simply a heat pump replacement program for an emergency when a customer needs a heat pump at a moment notice. But others uh, on bill financing programs have different elements and many of them are about reducing energy for their customers. And so on bill financing has evolved over time. Some on bill financing programs date back to the early 80s. A few programs have started in the last few years to tweak the model to offer bigger energy savings to a wider set of their communities, including underserved populations. And so, for example, Midwest Energy Co-op in Western Kansas has, since 2008, provided more than a thousand retrofits to their members and has leveraged more than eight million dollars in energy efficiency investment. Also, five co-ops in Eastern Kentucky are doing a very successful on bill financing program since 2012. After, after my, my speaker time, Lindsay Smith will be talking about the South Carolina Cooperative and their Helmet House program in which ESI was part of the development. The pilot did include eight co-ops, but right now five co-ops are developing uh, similar Helma House programs all about on bill financing and they're all about energy efficiency. And so Lindsay Smith will go into detail about those programs. And so why 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 on bill financing and what is the business case for on bill financing? So on bill financing at the end of the day is 
energy efficiency more broadly. And it can be a good business case for rural electric co-ops and for public utilities alike. And it's not just about the concept of on bill financing will sell less power. It's also about member satisfaction. On bill financing uh, reduces uh, energy so customers feel better in their homes. And so it's, it's, it's a lot of good things that it can do for the customer and for the consumer. And also, once the utility is inside of the house of a uh, consumer, customer, it can do a lot of other things. It can put a uh, thermostat, it can, it can inform the consumer of all the great elements that the cob can provide and all the services it can offer. And in the long term, it provides a lot of good things in reference to the clean power plan and to the local businesses and to the local community. It really keeps all the dollars and the money locally into the community and it, it helps all around. So we come to the point of talking about on bill financing and all the great elements that it has. There's a lot more, there's a lot of finer points about design program. But one of the points I want to make is how to finance an on bill program. That's something that everyone will have on their minds. And so I will go a little bit upon the sources of origi origination to capitalize an on bill financing program. And so essentially the, there's, there's three categories. There's public funds, there's private funds, and internal funds. In terms of public funds, you can find from the U.S. Department of Agriculture the Energy Efficiency Conservation Loan Program, also known as, known as ECLIP, which I will talk about it later, and the Rural Economic Development Loan Grant, also known as Red Leg. And so it is the Rural Economic Development Department and the Department of Agriculture that offers this Red Leg loan at 0%. But uh, they are competitive and they are offered two or three times a year. There's only a two million maximum per application and a 100 million annual cap per year for these loans. Utilities can also use loans from their cooperative banks such as CFC and CoBank. For example, Midwest Energy used $8 million in loans from CFC to capitalize and their own bill financing program and has been able to, as I said, more than 1,000 homes. This is a very, this is also a viable option for your daily. Alternatively, UDDs may also choose to use their own internal funds to capitalize on bill financing, and this is the most common manner that we have found as we did research on on bill financing. Co-ops and UDDs may choose to create a loan revolving fund that recycles payments and interest from loans, from existing loans, that can be used to fund future loans and therefore fund future retrofits. So as as we as I said, uh, let me say a few things about 
a clip about the energy efficiency conservation loan program which is run by the USDA Rural Utility Service or IUS. The program went into effect in February of last year and so it is one of the first programs by IUS to systematically offer energy efficiency support for rural utilities. Rural utilities can use these loans to start up or expand any number of energy efficiency or related activities. If, unlike Red Lake, as a rolling, not competitive application process. And our US, the Rural Utility Service, has the capacity and the, and the authority to make ECLIP loans. They have the, the authority to do up to $6 billion in loans. There, there's a large opportunity for, for, this, for these loans. It is not just for on bill financing, but on bill financing programs can use these loans to capitalize them. And so the utilities have this great opportunity uh, with ICLIP. The government, the interest rate on ICLIP is the government rate on the, on the day the loan is awarded. So right now it's about 3% and there is a one eighth that needs to be added to that interest rate. And so who is eligible for the ECLIP loan? Loan recipients for ECLIP can be any electric utility. This could be a rural electric cooperative, a public utility, or even an invest, investor owned utility, provided that they serve a rural area. And so, rural areas is defined as a town or other dedicated separate place of less than 20,000 people. For utilities with service areas that cover both rural areas and larger population centers, the ECLIP loans must be shown to directly benefit the rural portion of the service area. Non-current rural utility service buyers would need to be approved or re-approved as RUS buyers in order to be able to apply for ECLIP loans which could be an involved process. USDA is pretty open to what types of projects these loans can support. So there's, there's a wide range of eligible investments and activities that include energy efficiency projects, such as building weatherization, HVAC upgrades, ground source heat pumps, efficient lighting, and a lot more, like insulation, heat pumps, you name it, a lot of them. Other eligible activities include distributed generation for on or off grid renewable energy service. The, also demand side management investments and energy audits as well as consumer education and other staff costs. The loan provisions for the ECLIB loan states that these loans are reimbursable and are essentially like a line of credit. So the co-op or public you or rural utility that decides to, to apply for a loan and to water a loan does not actually have to borrow and does not have to pay 
the interest on all the borrowed money on all the on all the loans it only pays the interest on the portion of the loan that is that is withdrawn to be spent on on the program US, USDA also allows uh, for equity borrowers to to use up to 5% of the total loan amount to be received upfront to handle a stop, start up cost of the program. And so that is an exception to what I said before. And so because loans can be of any size, there's no maximum to a loan. The larger the loan, the, the more things that can be done with it, uh, provided that they're, they're all detailed in a business plan within the application. And so, with the application process, the RUS wants to know what would be included and what would be funded with the loan. So there is no loan maximum, but RUS wants to know um, what would be done with that amount of money borrowed by the utility. And so there's two required elements uh, for loan programs, a business plan and a quality assurance plan for the loan funded projects. RUS has given minimal guidance on these plans with the hope that co-ops and other utilities will develop something that works for them and isn't too conform to a federal template. This of course may have led to confusion about what should or should not be included. And so there is there is in the works a more, let's say, development of a toolkit to provide a, a more specific toolkit, uh, details on what should go on a business plan and quality assurance plan. But, and so utilities should contact their RUS general field representative to get started on, on this loans application but Eclipse while it has started about uh, about a year ago it has already provided two loans to two co-ops across the country totaling 10.5 million dollars these two co-ops Roanoke Electric Cooperative in North Carolina and North Arkansas Electric Cooperative are doing own bill financing programs. They have used these loans to then reloan it to their customers in order to do energy efficiency programs. Roanoke Electric Cooperative chose to do a more an own bill financing program that is tariff based. And so that's one of the possibilities within a design program of an own bill financing uh, in which in which the in which it's not a loan, it's it is a debt that the customer has with the utility and that it is put on the meter of the of the customer and then that that debt, let's say, is repaid over a period of time, agreed with the DD to pay for the cost of the energy efficiency retrofits. And so this, these repayments are included on the participants' monthly utility bill. And, and then, so because it's, it's an agreement, it's a debt, on the customer, there's no loan, there's no papers that create 
that is a lot easier for the utility because it, there's no uh, loan papers. In South Carolina, there was there was a hybrid, uh, and Lindsay Smith will go over that. In North Arkansas Electric Cooperative, it's it's not a new program. It's it's a new way to develop their existing on bill financing program, which has been running since the early 80s. It's one of the oldest programs run by a cop. And so they have used ECLIP to, to get $4.5 million and been able to continue with their successful program, which, which is mostly for heat pumps and for weatherization projects. And so, in in so here is a, a slide for everyone to look at um, the USDA resources. And and again, we're we're not trying to promote USDA. We're we are nonprofit, and um, and we're just trying to tell what are the options for utilities in terms of financing, because there 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 are many ways to finance. A non bill program, and as I said before, there, there's a multitude of them, and these these ones that I have gone over are, are one of them. And so finally, I I would like to let you know about all the work that ESI has been doing with on bill financing. ESI has been for the last year been grant funded to do work with utilities as it regards to on bill financing, assist them to help them think about their design programs and think and help and assist them through their capital how to provide capital to their program. And so we we are ready to help utilities with financing, including applications to the ICLE program. And for that, we have a team of experts that are ready to engage with COPs and public utilities, as well as stakeholders interested in utility-run efficiency programs. As a nonprofit, we are not a turnkey program, but instead we seek to help utilities set up a program that works for them, just as we did uh, when we helped in South Carolina the aid cops and the on bill financing pilot. I want to stress that while we function like like consultants, our work is grant funded and therefore our assistance is completely free. We don't provide any charge for utilities that want to work with us. Right now, we are working with two municipal utilities in Michigan and in Iowa to implement on bill financing. We are also working with one co op in Michigan to do the same thing, and we hope to take this program on a on a larger scale on, on these two states. And so let me just um, let me just uh, turn it over to Lindsay Smith right now, who is the vice president of uh, education programs for the electric cooperative of South Carolina, and he will go over the health house program and how that program developed and what has been done after that by the cops. So, um, Lindsay, whenever you want. Miguel, thank you. I appreciate that information and uh, this opportunity to talk to uh, the group about our program in South Carolina, Help My House, which is an on-bill financing program uh, that we started back in 2011 and continue to, uh, to work on today. Um, uh, what I will talk about in this presentation is who we are as South Carolina Co-ops, a little bit of our background, 
uh, why we got into on-bill financing, uh, how our program works, the results and lessons we've learned, and then what we're doing now and what we'll be doing next with this, this program model. South Carolina Electric Co-ops, there are 20 of them, 20 distribution systems uh, around the state. We serve in all 46 counties across the state. And uh, the co-ops come together through their GNT Central Electric Power Cooperative to, to buy power, uh, and also through the statewide, which is the organization I work, work for here. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the demographics of this group when, when we get to the next few slides. One thing important to state here, unlike some co-ops, uh, maybe yours included, we do not own power plants. We buy all of our power, mostly from a state-owned power authority called Santee Cooper, some of it from investor-owned utilities uh, and uh, Southeastern Power, Co or, or power Company. Um, so it, it's, it's kind of a hodgepodge, but, but mostly from Santee Cooper. That, of course, puts us in a fairly unique position as really uh, uh, consumer advocates, uh, which is the role we take most often in most of our stakeholder meetings here at uh, also important to state for you, we are not state regulated here in South Carolina. Uh, we, we always talk about we're the most directly regulated group of co-ops uh, or, or kind of co-ops in that we're regulated by our, by our members. When they get together for annual meetings and vote in and out trustees, of course, that's about as accountable as you get. Uh, here's a little bit more specifically about our members, the demographics. About a quarter of them live in manufactured housing, mobile homes to a lot of folks. Um, that's three times the national average, so that's a, that poses a lot of unique housing challenges for us here in the state. Half of them are more likely to live below the national poverty line, so we are poorer as a rule. Our members are. In some months, they're spending uh, almost, well, uh, the great majority of their disposable income on their electric bills. That's worth knowing and important and something we've got to work on with them. We rank really high in cooling degree days per year. It's a hot place to live. And when it's cold, um, our folks are using primarily electricity to heat their homes, whether it's electric space heater, heaters, resistance heating, or heat pumps, which is uh, most of, of what they're doing. So to address all of those issues, uh, in 2011, the co-ops came together through that GNT I mentioned, Central Electric, and launched a pilot version of on-bill financing called Help My House. And you see on the left side of your screen there, the pilot version lasted a couple of years, involved eight co-ops, as Miguel mentioned. Uh, they retrofitted in a, in a little less than a year's time, 125 homes. The, the goal was 100, but they had so many folks interested in participating, they upped the ante a little bit. The main purpose of this pilot or test, it was research. It was the co-ops researching uh, whether energy efficiency could be tapped into instead of asking Santee Cooper and others to keep building more power plants. You all know how that works. When they do that, they pass the cost to you and you pass it to your members. And eventually, when you squeeze hard enough, people squirm and people get angry. And is there a way to offset some of those expenses and, and uh, by tapping into energy efficiency, pass along lower costs to your members and not have to, to uh, build so many power plants through your power providers. We did this, Central did this with RUS and GNT funding. You heard Miguel mention a moment ago, red leg loans. That's what Central Electric used, and we'll talk some more about that in a minute. Uh, and then we'll talk later on in this uh, presentation about the ongoing programs uh, that are currently working at individual co-ops. They have launched individual help my house uh, programs their own, funding them in different kinds of ways, five co-ops. Um, purpose main, main purpose there is just member service. What are you going to do when those members call you every winter and say, I can't afford this power bill? Uh, what can you do for them? This is one thing you can do for them. And they, they've used a mix of co-op and our U.S. funding dollars to do that. Uh, let's talk about the pilot again. Uh, I mentioned Central Electric as the G&T. Their board in 2010 had these efficiency goals. Let's reduce residential energy use in 10 years by 10%. Uh, let's reduce the wholesale residential power purchase costs. And let's make, sure, let's make sure as we test what we're going to test that we maintain or improve member satisfaction. And also, oh, by the way, um, will, will consumers buy into this? Will they be interested in this? They partnered with us, the statewide, to design the pilot program. Uh, 
And we worked together with the folks in Washington at USDA and RUS to actually advance federal legislation that enables more financing of efficiency. Back in that time, red leg would not have been available for energy efficiency loans. We worked with the folks at RUS and, and USDA, and obviously with the folks in Congress as well, and they reworked the rules so that red leg could be used for that. Central was the first co-op group or concern that got one of these newly revamped red leg loans and then kicked off the pilot program using that funding. Um, we structured it in such a way that it is very much like the tariff that is used by those Kentucky co-ops that Miguel mentioned a moment ago. A lot of folks have gone to the tariff model where you're not really making a loan to folks, but instead uh, you're basically putting a surcharge that's trans transferable to the next person who moves into that home. Well, our loans are, are set up pretty much the same way. We did ours, though, through uh, legislation at the state level, a 2010 state law that ties our loans to the meter on the property uh, and also allows us as co-ops or any utility to disconnect the member if they do not pay the loan payment. Um, again, that loan stays with the home if it's sold. And this helps eliminate the need for a credit check. Why is that important? Because some of the very people who need these, uh, these retrofits, these improvements to their home, some of the very people who can't afford to pay your electric bills are people who cannot pass a credit check in many cases. Um, so it was important to us to have risk management that got us around that. More on this, uh, it allows members to finance the energy efficiency loans with our measures with low interest loans, ours are less than or are 4% or less. Uh, they're repaid on the monthly utility be, uh, bills like Miguel described. And uh, of course it gets over a huge barrier um, and that is the folks who don't have the money in the pocket to go buy a new heat pump. A lot of the rebate programs are terrific. They work great for a subset of your members and, cons and consumers, but they have to be folks who, have, who can write that check and then get paid back later. A lot of the folks we're talking about here today don't have that money to pay out at the beginning to get a rebate. Okay, so more about phase one, this pilot I talked about, eight co-ops, there they are, Central Electric, the statewide association, and then key partners. One of them is the host today. Inter Environmental and Energy Study Institute could not have done this program without them. They were the folks, uh, they and ECOVA at the bottom of your screen who brought experience to the table with EESI's work funded by the Doris Duke Charitable Foundation. Here's the structure of the pilot um, and how we worked. Basically, you want to follow um, uh, Central Electric is the source of this whole thing, as I mentioned. What the heck is KW Savings? In order to do a red leg loan, you must have a third party that takes the money from the, 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 the outfit or the co-op that borrowed it from, from USDA and then makes the microloans ultimately to, in this case, uh, the co-op, uh, and, and then to the consumer member to pay the contractor. Uh, so basically Central uh, gives over the money to KW Savings. It, KW Savings for us is the administrative arm for our Help My House program. They own the brand. Uh, they work with the co-op. The co-op has an account representative who, who deals with the consumer member. Um, uh, come out, take a look at your house, make sure that it uh, pre-qualifies for the program if it does. That representative calls a BPI, Building Performance, Institute Certified Energy Auditor who comes out with a blower door, goes to the member's home, conducts the tests, crunches the numbers, projects with computer software, can we save this person enough money to more than cover that monthly loan payment? If we reduce their um, monthly electric bill by 50 bucks and then their loan payment's $40, we've just made them more comfortable, we've lowered their overall output for cost of electricity and their loan payment, put a little bit of money in the pocket, and everybody's happy so they can make their loan payment and everything. Um, we have a list of certified uh, contractors that we've trained who have a contract with us. They understand our process. The member gets to choose which contractor they want to work with. Uh, we give them a list. These are folks who are, um, are authorized to be part of our program. Uh, these contractors also understand but that if this auditor comes in at the end of the job and the work is not done to our standards and satisfaction, the contractor must come back and complete the repairs in the home before he or she gets paid. 
Uh, that's the way it works. Only after that work is done satisfactorily to our standards does the payment of the contractor happen and does the consumer member begin paying uh, on the electric bill. Our available services at KW Savings, you'll see all of them there. We can do it soup to nuts. We can do the whole thing. The co-op doesn't have the resources and people to do it. Or we can do these uh, different uh, individual items that you see listed here. So um, everything from uh, energy audits to contractor management, loan review, everything listed there, including uh, work and resolution problem solving after the work is completed. Another important function of KW Savings, that third party I mentioned, we're the, we're the brand managers, we're the franchisers. So uh, if, if we're the Chick-fil-A, then everybody else who has a Help My House uh, program is a Chick-fil-A store, a franchise. And we're making sure that they're all frying the chicken sandwiches the same way. They're all keeping things spotlessly clean. All the employees are nice and uh, uh, doing their jobs well. But importantly, all quality controls that you see listed here, oversight of loan processing, that has to be something we're plugged into. The data collection is, is happening as it should. We want to keep up with how the houses are performing after we finish improving them. And then, of course, we have to see the business plan up front. How are you going to operate your, your Help My House program at the local level? It's got to be, some of the things have to be common from program to program. There is some variable variability allowed, however. Here again is a, a layout of the process. I kind of went over it when I went through the, uh, the flow chart earlier, but you see it there. Selection, which is sometimes self-selecting. I have a high power bill. I call my co-op. I need help. Uh, you send out your visual order. You look at my house. You pre-qualify. Then comes the BPI energy audit. You approve my loan. I get to pick the contractor. Contractor installs on schedule with me. And then that final inspection and, and approval that I mentioned earlier. Um, when we did the pilot, here's how things broke out. Most everybody got air sealing. That won't surprise many of you who deal with this sort of thing on a regular basis. Duct leakage, something that's most often overlooked by the HVAC, the heat pump uh, installation folks. They just drop the unit and drive off and never take a look at ducts very often. And that's something that needs to be fixed. Uh, attic insulation, and then lots of new heat pumps replacement and uh, also replacing electric furnaces. Don't know about where, how things work where you guys live, but here in South Carolina still, a lot of the mobile homes, single wide and double wide mobile homes, are still so, sold with electric furnaces. Incredibly expensive way to heat a home. And that's some of our double wide mobile home um, owners here are paying five, $600 electric bills in the winter. Crazy, but, but true. Uh, measured results were close to predicted in our pilot. We predicted they'd be about 12,000 kWh a year on average. We came very close to that. That's on the right-hand column. Annual savings also very close. Project costs were dead on. And the simple payback, we, these uh, red leg loans are 10-year loans. We wanted to come in under that, and we did um, around six years, six and a half years. Annual savings average, per, there you see almost $1,200 average annual savings. Um, net savings of almost $300 after loan payments are made. So that's significant. Not only making people more comfortable, covering their uh, loan payment with the savings they're, they're getting on their electric bill, but also putting money in their pockets. And that was, uh, that was important to us. Demand savings, um, tracking fairly closely what you saw in energy savings, although we did not install demand control switches in the homes because we wanted to see them perform strictly with the energy efficiency measures. And then we surveyed folks afterwards because we needed to ask them some questions that weren't going to show up on uh, meters and, and electric bills. Are you satisfied with your co-op? Almost all of them said, I am, uh, even uh, at least as much or higher. Are you more comfortable? Um, almost 90% somewhat or a lot more comfortable, and that's an important indication for us. Uh, we wanted to see that happen. Are you satisfied with your post-repair electric bills? Again, 90% said yes, somewhat or very. Uh, here's an example of some folks who were very satisfied, the Norsworthies who live in Somerton, South Carolina. They're served by Santee Electric Cooperative. You can see they've got kind of a typical size ranch style home about 2,000 square feet they are both retired so they're now on fixed incomes 
Social Security and retirement. Um, any amount they can save on their electric bill is great. Uh, we installed the energy efficiency measures you see there on your screen to the tune of about $6,500. And they, this is uh, what they saw on average uh, on their monthly electric bills in terms of savings. Savings approximately $150 to $200 a month. So you can imagine what a huge difference. And that's just one family, one example. Uh, there were others that were even higher than that. So what are the lessons and conclusions um, we learned from the pilot? 34% uh, less electricity on average in each home, and again, you know, almost $300 uh, in savings per year after the payments are made. Coincident peak savings of about a third, again, tracking about the same as what I showed earlier in uh, electricity use. Uh, no load factor, which, I, as I said, would have improved with installed uh, control switches. Um, that comfort factor, very important, and the owner said they got that, and of course they were extremely satisfied. Um, Miguel already showed that slide, so I'm going to skip on and talk to about this phase two, because when this program ended, uh, this research and, and development program by Central Electric, the GNT, several of the co-ops, some of them involved in the pilot, others not involved in the pilot, said, you know, we liked that model. We liked that our that members liked it, that they were really satisfied with their co-op, that they became more comfortable. And, and we'd like to explore it as nothing more right now for us than a member uh, service, something we can finally tell um, uh, the person who calls us every winter or every summer in the heat of summer and says, I can't afford this bill. Um, and so these are the co-ops that have decided to run the program, uh, with Aiken Electric and Santee Electric being two of the first and most active, as you can see from their numbers. Uh, Aiken Electric, in fact, has applied for and uh, is about to be awarded its third $1 million red leg loan. That's how they're funding their program. Santee Electric just received its first $1 million. It's funding uh, its lending pool, or it has to this point, with its own dollars. And that's true of Black River Electric and the others you see on the grid there as well, with the exception of Lynch's River. Uh, the reason you're seeing NA on Little River and Lynch's River, those are brand new programs to the family, uh, both of them starting uh, their program. Little River with its own Lynch's River with a million dollar red leg loan that they just received. Um, so uh, approaching 350 homes since the pilot, if you have added the 125 pilot homes, you're, you're getting close to 500 homes program-wide that we've completed with Help My House, which I know relative to some of the programs out there nationally is probably a drop in the bucket. For us, that's significant. And what it does for us is important uh, in that with EPA 111D's final rule coming out, they've said to the states, you guys can get double credit for any energy efficiency you do for low-income residents, for low-income consumers. The fact that we have run a, a program like this, and oh, by the way, partnered with Duke University to sell them some of the carbon offsets that we're gaining by weatherizing these homes, we are having to prove to Duke University and they in turn to the, what we call the carbon offset police, how they're gaining those, those carbon offsets, how they're, they're getting those improvements. By getting those measures in place and by establishing a way to do that, we're, we're, we're accomplishing something EPA is requiring states to do, and that is to be able to prove that you're getting the energy efficiency gains. So we're, we're, we've got a leg up even at this very small scale on something that could go bigger scale depending on what direction the co-ops in the state of South Carolina choose to, to, to go. I know we're short on time. I'm going to stop there and hand it back over to Dave, Amory, and Miguel, and let you guys take it from here. I believe, hopefully, have a few minutes for questions. Thank you very much, Lindsay. This is Miguel again, and thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, now we will open it up for questions, if anyone has any questions or uh, comments about webinar? You can, you can raise your hand. Uh, if you want to ask a question, you can raise your hand. Uh, if you're using a computer, it's on the upper uh, level of your computer screen. You, you can also type questions on the chat box. Um, and if you want, you, you can also Unmute your phones, um, and, but please uh, do it in an orderly manner. Uh, 
if you want to ask a question you can unmute your phone through the pound six Miguel, this is Dave, and one question I, I guess I have of Lindsay about uh, defaults. I know that it's tied to the meters, but if I pull that meter and nobody else moves in there, I've got an empty house and no repayment of that loan. What, what was your default rate? Dave, it's less than 1%. We have not had a whole lot of experience with defaults at this stage. Um, what has happened in a couple of cases where, where folks have just gone bankrupt and, and moved out, out and left the house. Uh, essentially, the loan goes dormant during that period, so you're not collecting payments, obviously, on the loan at that stage. But when the new homeowner moves in, that state law I spoke of earlier in the presentation has a provision where there's a document in the closing packet for the new owner that says there's this loan on your meter and you will be paying uh, on that loan when you move into the home on your electric bill. So there's disclosure there at closing. The new homeowner knows that's on there. Certainly that new homeowner has, or the buyer, has the option to negotiate that with the bank or whomever is selling the home and might, you know, negotiate it so that the bank pays it off, but, but it's there. So the next person coming in pays the loan, begins paying on the loan. The only thing you've lost at a point, of course, is the interest you would have gained otherwise, and you're not going to ding the new buyer for that, but you do get the loan paid off ultimately. Thank you. This is Dave. I don't want to dominate the questions, but I guess one of the questions I, I do have, if nobody else is going to ask something, is on the, uh, the follow-up on the certification of the energy efficiency savings. Are you, are you requiring a, a second or follow-up follow blower door test to, to guarantee that, or are you just, a, is it a visual inspection? Uh, neither. We, what we're doing is using um, our billing um, history, so usage history for, for the consumers. We, we reconnect with the co-op and we pull the usage history for the, for the home since the retrofit was done, which is how that was initially done uh, and studied for the first 12 months after the improvements were completed. Uh, in fact, EESI hosted a, um, a presentation on Capitol Hill for all the energy uh, legislative liaisons, congressional liaisons, uh, to present those findings. That's how we came up with the 34 percent and so forth. But we're in the process right now of updating that study. Uh, so a couple of years since we've checked in on those homes, we want to see how they're doing. As you may be fully aware, there's uh, uh, um, some data out there from previous programs that indicate people uh, get less energy efficient once you make their homes more energy efficient, in, in meaning uh, you know, now I'm saving all this money on my electric bill. Uh, I like being really cool in the so I'll just turn that thermostat down a little bit lower. And they, and they start actually, you know, chipping away at some of the savings that you help them gain. We are, we'll be interested in seeing how, uh, how that, that's going to play out and whether or not that's a factor for us in, in this case. Dave. Thank you. And follow up on that then, Miguel. Is that allowed under the uh, – uh, ECLIP program, or, or is an audit required on that? It, it's not. It's not required. We we did ESID and an, and an evaluation of the program, and after one year, so the so we got a external consulting company that look at all the all the data from the pilot program after one year and it was weather normalized and so after looking at all that data uh, the number at the end of it was 34 percent energy saving um, and so that that was greatly varied because it included single family housing included uh, single and double wide uh, manufactured homes so some some uh, so 50% energy savings, uh, especially double wide, and, and some so 25%. So 34 is the average on one year weather normalized uh, data. 
and it is it is not required by by ICLIB. It, it was just something that we did uh, in after the pilot in 2013, and we have um, we have a report for anyone who is interested. It, it um, and I and if you want, you you can email us. Um, my my email address is on on the on the screen if you want the report and more information I will be happy to provide to you. Thank you. Well, th this is Dave again and I know Miguel we talked about the possibility of these slides being available to uh, participants and are, are you with that information? Yes, uh, yes Dave, these slides are available on the site's website and, and I think uh, we can we can send an email to everyone that has participated in, on this uh, on this uh, on this webinar, and also people who are interested, they can also provide and uh, send email uh, to me. It, it, it's my email address is on the it, it's on the screen, and I will be happy to just send them uh, you know send them the recording and and the website. Alternatively, the slides are on on our website on esi.org, esi.org. That that's where you can find information about this webinar, and we will post the slides and the recording on a dedicated website within our website. Uh, this is Amri, just jumping in. Uh, the slides are not quite up yet, but they will be very shortly. Well, this is Dave again. It doesn't appear there's any more questions, but I do want to thank uh, both Miguel and Lindsay for your presentations, and Amory for uh, hosting us today, and all the participants for taking time out of their schedules to uh, learn more about this on-bill financing opportunity. Yes, I, I would like to thank you what Dave had just said and I would like to thank everyone for attending this webinar and as I say if you have any further questions for myself or for Lindsay Smith you can email us and and as Amory said the slides will be up soon in our website and, and you can also send us an email uh, for any questions comments or if you want any further information so thank you very much for everyone and, and Hope to see you soon in, a, in, in another webinar. Thank you very much.